Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome back to my whiteboard. Today we're going to look at one of the most common um, engineering calculations that a process engineer gets to do, and that is to figure out pipe sizing. So the question of the day is, how big does the, how, what size diameter do you need your pipe to be? Do you need a two inch line, something like this, or three quarter inch line, something like that? How do you calculate it? That's what we're going to look at. And we're going to look at this with an example. And the example we're going to pick is, uh, we're just imagining, a, we're making up a problem. So we'll say it's 50,000 kilograms an hour of liquid propane. And propane has a density of 500 kilograms per cubic meter. And we want to decide what inside diameter is needed for this pipe. Now, before we go any further, we have to check that flow rate. Because one of the things that process engineers need to be aware of is the material balance number that we have for a flow rate. So if someone says it's 50,000 kilograms an hour of propane that we need right now today for the design, well, um, no, that's not actually not correct. Because we have to think about what we need maybe in the future or for control reasons. So what sort of design margin do we need? So we could size our piping for 50,000 kilograms an hour and it will work fine today. But five years from now, when the plant manager says, let's increase the throughput of the plant by 30%, um, your perfectly good pipe may not be big enough. So we always have to consider a bit of design margin here, so we have to figure that out. And in our case, we'll consider 30%. Okay. So we don't have a flow rate of 50,000. It's 50,000 plus 30%. What's next? Next, we're going to look at two different criteria. And this is what we want the pipe to do. Now, when we think pipes, we think, well, how hard can it be? You know, the, the purpose of a, of a pipe is to convey fluid from one end to the other. What, what else is there? And there's actually two things, we, two things we need to consider. One is erosion on the pipe wall. If the fluid is moving too fast through the pipe, it will wear out the pipe. And then in 10, 20 years, we get holes, and we don't like that. So we need to size the pipe so that we don't have erosion issues. Okay, that's criteria number one. That's a, that's a speed limit. Criteria number two is a little more interesting, and that is if the pipe is too small, the pressure drop from the inlet to the outlet will be too high. And if it gets too high, whoever's on the outlet of this pipe will not be able to do their job. We'll look at criteria one first, speed limit. And before we go into the, where we get these criteria from, we're going to go through the math that we need to actually do the pipe sizing, because it really is just a question of geometry, and a little bit of algebra. So, and I got my cheat notes. So we could say, The maximum velocity that we can tolerate is equal to whatever the mass flow is through our pipe. We'll divide that by fluid density so we get a volumetric flow rate. And now we'll divide that by the inside area of the pipe. And that's pi d squared. And we'll stick the 4 up there. Okay. And that's how we get it. And we can write this as an equation for diameter. And we can say d is equal to the square root for mass flow rate rho pi v max. And there is a perfectly good formula for sizing the pipe. So someone could say, well, size it for a maximum velocity of 
three meters per second. And you can go through the math and you can say that's the diameter. Okay, but there's nothing magic about three meters per second. Is it good for erosion? Couldn't tell you. It's a common number. If it's a vapor, uh, it might be 30 meters per second. Now there's some criteria from different organizations such as API or NORASC and they provide some very convenient formulas or correlations that will give you a hint about what we think the maximum velocity is for erosion reasons. And from API it's the following. So the maximum velocity is c, some constant c, divided by the square root of the density. And if we look at this, it looks kind of like kinetic energy. And that's what really what we're doing here. It's kinetic energy. And if the value for if our measurement of density has units of kilograms per cubic meter, then a c value of 122 is a pretty reasonable value for the allowable friction or allowable kinetic energy or velocity for flow rate through a pipe. And go through API 512, or pardon me, API 14E, not 512, 14E. Okay, so let's work through an example. So for our example, we have 50,000 kilograms per hour, density of 500 kilograms per cube, and a design margin, a design margin on flow rate of 30%. And first, we will pick, we will find the maximum velocity. So, the max, and we'll use this magic C factor, we'll call it 120. That's the number I typically use. 120 divided by the square root of 500 and that number is equal to 5.4 meters per second. So this says we should not allow the fluid to go faster than 5.4 meters per second. So we will pick that as our design velocity. That's our criteria. 5.4 meters per second. So now we can calculate the diameter. So the diameter is equal to a great big square root sign here, 4 times 50,000 times 1.3, divide that by 3600 to convert everything into kilograms per second. And we're going to divide that by 500 kilograms per meter cubed. We'll throw a pi in, throw a pi in there. And our maximum velocity and the diameter is. Zero point nine two six meters, or nine, or about ninety two point six millimeters. So a four inch pipe, which has an inside diameter of just over hundred millimeters, will work just fine. It will give us the right velocity. So that would be the right pipe size, using a maximum velocity as a criteria. Okay, so that's criteria one. What about pressure drop? Let's take a look at that. When we're looking at pressure drop per, for, for piping, this is because there's a minimum pressure that we can tolerate on the outlet. And it comes down to what can you afford to lose. So for example, if this fluid started off at, say, a thousand kPa gauge, what minimum pressure could our consumers downstream tolerate? If this is a feedstock into a reactor, coming from 1,000, maybe we don't want to go less than 950 kilograms per cubic meter, assuming this is 100 meters distance. 
because then that will really mess up our the flow control and our control valve. Okay, so that becomes the answer. Um, well, it's a little bit of a little bit of art is needed, but pressure drop per hundred meters is typically used to size piping according to friction loss, and it, and it is how much can we afford to lose. And there's a couple, and you can find guidelines in various places. If you're with an engineering company or an operating company, chances are they have their own guidelines. If not, go to NOROSC and check out their guidelines. So, in our case, um, NOROSC would say 10 kPa per 100 meters is adequate for this kind of service, and if it's a long header, supplying material to something that's distant, that seems about right. Because if it's 100 meters away, we take a 100, 10 kPa per 100 meters, that's a 10 kPa pressure drop, that might be okay. So now we can do that. But how do we do it? We have a criteria, but how do we apply it? And that's not easy. First, we're going to do it the wrong way, because it's always good to do it the wrong way. Let's just take a step back and look at the mechanical energy balance. dp over rho is equal to, go through the, the, we'll recant this, f l over d v squared over 2. Okay. So here, oh, and this isn't very helpful because I've got velocity. I need a mass flow. I need a bit of algebra. Okay, bear with me. F L over D, one half, mass flow, density, pi D squared, put a four up here, square the whole thing. And we get delta P over rho is equal to F L over D to the fifth, mass flow squared divided by pi squared multiplied by 8. Okay. So if we know the friction factor, we can crunch through the, the math here, rearrange it, and we can end up with, with diameter. The problem is the friction factor is a function of Reynolds number, and Reynolds number is a function of diameter. So we're kind of going around and around in circles. But for most piping, for a wide range of sizes, friction factor is usually in the range of 0 0.015. So you could just make the wild guess, throw it into here, get a half decent estimate for diameter, recalculate Reynolds number and friction factor, do it again, and you're probably going to be right, given that we've got a criteria for delta P divided by our length, 100 meters. That's a lot of work. There's a better way. And the better way was done sometime in the mid-70s by um, a couple of guys, Swami and Jane, where they were correlating friction factor. Now, the usual correlation that we see for friction factor is as a function of Reynolds number and roughness. So if you know the pipe diameter, you get the friction factor and calculate a pressure drop and all that is fine. But Swami and Jane also did this a little differently and they were looking at this specifically for the pipe sizing problem. So rather than expressing the friction factor in terms of the dimensionless variables Reynolds and relative roughness, they went about this a little differently. And you can find this formula in Perry's handbook. At least in my Perry's handbook, I've got an old one, I've got a fifth edition, and you can find it on its equation 5-65 in the fifth edition. So you can find it there. And I'll write down the formula. Hopefully I don't get it wrong. So Swami and Jane did this a little differently. Here's what they came up with as a piece of shit. Diameter squared times G... SF over Q 
squared is equal to 1 eighth. Roughness to the fifth power, gravity, SF, divided by Q squared, and that's to the 1 quarter power, plus G, not to Q, Q cubed, G, SF. And that is under the kinematic viscosity to the fifth power. And that's to the... And we're going to take the whole thing to the one-fifth power. And the variables are D is the pipe diameter, G is gravity, SF is the, pre is the normalized pressure drop per unit length. So SF is equal to delta P over rho G L. Nu is the kinematic viscosity, uh, D is the pipe diameter, and Q is the volumetric flow rate. And all of this works out in nice non-dimensional units. Okay. And that seems like a whole lot of a mess, but this is really easy to type into a spreadsheet. And I'm not going to bore you by putting the mathematics in here. All I'm going to say is we can now apply our criteria. We could say, I want 50 kPa for 100 meters and use that as a design criteria for calculating this value SF and put it in here. Our fluid liquid propane has a viscosity of 0.1 centipoise, so we divide that by the density and we can get the kinematic viscosity. And now we can just crunch through the math. And what we get using this criteria, 50 kPa per 100 meters, and that nasty formula is in one shot, we can calculate that we need 114 millimeters. And this says that our four inch line with an ID of about five, of 100 millimeters is too small. In this application it might be okay for the original design if we have only a flow rate of 50 kilo, 50,000 kilograms per hour going through it, but our future design case where we need some more flow rate the four inch line isn't good enough. It's not big enough. So that means it says we need to go up to 114. So we'll go up to the next line size. So instead of a four inch, that's a six inch line. So 150 millimeters ID. And that's it. Two different criteria for sizing lines. One is a speed limit. And the second is pressure drop per 100 meters. And this is the criteria that I find most useful because it ensures that the process engineer is in tune with the, are the hydraulics going to work so that the fluid can move from point A to point B. And I find this is the most useful criteria and is most important for low flow rates and small pipe diameters. That's all there is to it. Places where you don't use this, do not use this for compressible flow, like the outlet of PSVs, you have to use compressible flow calculations for that, do it carefully. And the second one is two-phase free draining lines. That's a totally different way of, and we need to look at that one a little differently. We need to look at a fruit number. But this satisfies the lion's share of the work that we do. So, thanks for watching. Please drop me a comment down below. Take care. Have a good day.